Hello, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafter here with some instructions and inspiration for your Stylish Suits cut file set. So this one I'm showing you is a full-on, fully complete card with suit, waistcoat, tie and shirt. But there are variations that you can use these files for. For instance, here's a shirt with a waistcoat. And you've got two styles of shirt included, one for a standard kipper tie, the kipper tie is included as you see here, and then also one for a bow tie, and I'll give you an idea of how to basically layer these up in just a minute. Here's one that's very Colin from accounts with a waistcoat and a tie, and then here's one with that's very much uh, a bit the opposite end of that scale. And then you can basically use rubber stamps on white card, alcohol markers, paint, spray, spritzes to decorate whatever part of that suit you want. So you can go as standard or as exciting as you fancy. This one is just basically the vest or the knitted vest with the suit. It looks a bit crocket and tubs. This one's basically the show off in the office. This one is a standard one but with the flashy tie. And then we've got the dinner jacket scenario for later. So if you've got a special event you want to celebrate, then this is the one for you. Now, let's take a look at some of the bits. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> As you see here, there are various ways of combining these. Um, but ultimately, I've also included a shaped card as well. Now... This is the shaped card. You've got a front and a back. The front is plain. The back has a dashed score line running through it. So you'll score it and fold it. Apply glue above the score line. And then place the front on top of that. Now this could be cut from coloured cardstock or just plain white cardstock or even plain black. Plain black might work well if you have lots of colours going on with the suit and the shirt and the tie because that will help them pop and stand out. The white might work well for a classic invitation, especially if you're doing perhaps a wedding invitation with the grey suit that I've showed you. So either of those will work well. And there you see, we've got the folded card now. Now on the front we can put, as we've seen, any combination of bits and pieces. So let's take a look through some of those. I've included two jacket styles. Both are assembled in the same way, but I'll show you both. The one on the left, you'll have two pieces and they look slightly different at the base. One's got a rounded tip and the other's got a pointed tip. The pointed one goes on the right hand side of the jacket and the rounded one goes on the left hand side as you see me positioning them here. So all you would do is glue them in place. Now those four pieces will cut from one piece of cardstock, but you can separate out the lapels if you want to do like a teddy boy style and have the lapels being a different color. The one on the right has the same shaped tips at the bottom. So you could use one on one side, one on the other. It doesn't really matter too much for that. Just glue them in place and then keep them to one side ready to put on your project. Now I'll move those to one side. Now bringing in the jacket, uh, sorry the shirt, again you've got two styles. The main shirt body is the same for both, but you've got two different styles of collar. The first style has the two big wings and they fit on like that. And then the other has this one piece, which will stick on just like that. For the large collar pieces, you'll just put two dabs of glue, as you're seeing me do here. And then stick them down just at the end points. And this gives you the opportunity to raise up that collar and stick the tie underneath. I'll come back and do that in a second.
For the second style, you'll put some glue along the base. Don't put it on the wing tips of the collar because they'll need to fold over. You're best to score those as well with a sharp stylus as it's quite a thin piece that you'll need to fold over. When it comes to putting the ties in, as I mentioned, with the larger collar pieces, just raise them up a little bit and then grab your kipper tie, apply a thin strip of glue to the back of that, slip it underneath the collar and then line the tip up with the dashed score line that runs down the middle of the shirt. For the second style, as I mentioned, fold over those wing tips. And if you need to, if your cardstock's a bit thicker, just grab yourself uh, a scoring tool or something flat and smooth and squish those down. Then you're going to put a bit of glue in between those wing tips. Take the bow tie and press it down into that. Once you've got your shirt done, you can decide if you're going to use the waistcoat or the vest to go on top, and that will fit directly on top. If you're going to do the jacket as, as a freestanding, you can apply the back as well. If you're not, if it's going to be mounted on the card, you can just stick the shirt directly to the um, folded card. I have to remember what it was called then. When you've got the shirt in position, again, you can decide if you're using a vest or a waistcoat. Pop those down if you are. If not, go in with your jacket pieces. I've chosen to stick the right-hand side piece down first. There is an overlap, as a jacket would, and it's up to you whether you prefer the right-hand side to overlap or the left-hand side. Generally the shoulders and the base should line up and if you're using a shirt then the shirt cuffs should stick out just below the sleeve of the jacket. And there we go. There's a shirt, tie, jacket and card fully assembled. And of course, I showed you earlier a variety of ways that you can decorate this. As you see here, the shirt sticks out just below those sleeves. And again, I've applied the back. But if I was doing the jacket, then I would not apply that back. You can, of course, decorate it with whatever you've got available in your craft room. And here are some more ideas to help you on your way.